that is crazy and yet so true. I mean, yeah. Christianity has become so convoluted to the point that when I was on my journey of, of starting my coaching business, I was, I was, I am still sold out Jesus. And I was associating that everything that I was doing was like Christian business coaching. And I had so many people tell me like, you shouldn't do that because you don't know what type of Christian you are when you're portraying Christian business coach. The people are immediately going to say, what kind of Christian is she? Is she a Bible thumper? Is she Baptist? Is she, what denomination is she? Is non-denominational? Does she believe in kingdom? Does she have this? And there's all of these breakdowns of what ultimately God, the father just wants us to be in communion and in family and it's a kingdom and it's kingdom Christianity right. above all things. And yet we as humans, because we try to fit people into identities, into these labels, we've broken it so far down that I feel like it's lost its trust factor, which right. is really, really sad and the complete opposite of what God stands for. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah, wild. It's and wild. when you think about it from like allowing yourself from a musical perspective, I think it's really powerful. And why I'm so drawn to it is because, you know, music is a love language in and of itself. And it's cross generational. It's cross cultural. If you go down to the elements of just like playing guitar or just playing piano and then you start adding those other sounds to it. It reminds me of like David playing the harp and all of the people who were just literally resounding the sound of heaven here on earth at that time. Everyone was drawn to it. And now what we're doing is we're layer layering messaging on top of it. And so it's actually, I believe, like um, a, one of the highest calls to be a musician, to be able to cultivate words over top of sound that is a connective spirit opportunity. Yeah. So we have to steward it well, right? right? The words matter. Words do words matter. Do matter. <laughs> yes, they do. They 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 definitely have power. So yeah. talk to me through because, like you said, you could talk to Jesus all day. So could I. Um, I'm really curious about other facets of who you are. Um, I really want to hear about the business side uh, because I think music and the music industry is a business in so many realms. But also this tech company that you have, you're cultivating a business with your wife which you can also share about how you met somebody in Alaska. Cause I have a lot of single friends who would love to just meet someone out of the country <laughs> or in another state that's far, far away and it just be bliss. So yes. give us some marital advice and tell me about business. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I met my wife. Uh, I have family that they live in Alaska. So my uncle is from Morganfield, Kentucky. My dad, they're all from Morganfield, Kentucky, which is like pretty much the middle of kind of where all those tornadoes hit. And um, and so my uncle in the my great uncle moved to Alaska in the 70s and my dad's brother moved to Alaska, which is my uncle in the 80s. And they started an excavating business. And so I had I have family up there and. Uh, mm -hmm. I've gotten in touch with one of my cousins um, and I hadn't talked to him in a long time and he, he started. Oh, man, let's. I need to come to Alaska, you know, that'd be cool. We haven't seen each other since we were like 15 and all this stuff. And so we were really excited about it, playing for me to come out there. And then his, the girl that he was dating at the time uh, was like, oh my gosh, I need to introduce my sister to him. He's, you know, whatever. And so we just kind of started off being friends, my, uh, my now wife and I, and um, just kind of, really kicked it off. I mean, really, it started off like this. this really, I was kind of discipling her. You know, we just really were focused on like Jesus. There was no, I mean, I never thought I would do a long distance relationship and I don't think she did. So I think it was just kind of like a natural, like just talk about Jesus and grow in our relationship with the Lord. And then I started being attracted to her a little bit. And so I started kind of getting counseling on it um, from some of my mentors, like one of my greatest mentors actually ended up he's a uh, a marital counselor and so I had a free marital counselor the whole time <laughs> yes yes and, more, yes. <laughs> and so, uh, awesome. yeah and so uh, he kind of guided me through what to do and things like that and how to be natural and not make it like normal relationships where it's like immediately think you're gonna marry him and you know start having all those like 
uh, emotional ties and attractive ties. Like, make sure you keep her as your sister. So that was really cool because I had that. And sometimes you just don't think about this. I mean, obviously, there's worldly things that you think about when you start being attracted to somebody. And I wanted to make sure that that wasn't the case.